Mexico is elsewhere now. The ceremony has been held in Kinshasa, the capital of the Democratic Republic of Congo, to officially mark a deal between the country's ruling coalition and the opposition. Under the agreement, President Joseph Kabila would stay in power for a year, but the constitution cannot be changed to let him run again. The signing comes despite negotiations to implement the accord, which collapsed in late March. Members of Congo's ruling coalition and those of the opposition came together on Thursday, April the 27th, to officially mark the signing of a political accord that was originally agreed up on December the 31st last year, following a national dialogue mediated by the country's Congo Conference of Catholic Bishops, Senko. The dialogue involved the presidential majority of President Joseph Kabila's political supporters and a large coalition of opposition groups. Senko helped negotiate a December the 31st deal aimed at avoiding a political crisis by ensuring an election is held this year to elect Kabila's successor. Kabila's refusal to step down after his mandate ended on December the 19th sparked violent protests at the end of last year in which security forces killed at least 40 people. But not all members of the opposition were present at Thursday's signing. The coalition remains divided on whether to support Felix Shisekedi, who took over leadership after the death of his father, Etienne Shisekedi, in February. It's my duty as a leader. If a leader cannot recognize how much his population is suffering, then he is the devil. I refuse to be the devil. I looked at my people and I completed my duty that Etienne Shisekedi sent me to do. Today, I have done my moral duty. Congo's government spokesperson said the government is committed to the process and to finding lasting solutions to the crisis. The government has previously denied that Kabila is trying to violate the constitution. Kabila was required by constitutional term limits to step down when his second mandate ended on December 1, 2016. His ruling coalition and some opposition members agreed to delay the vote until April 2018, citing lack of preparation but the main opposition bloc rejected the accord. In late March, the Catholic bishops withdrew from their role as mediators, saying the deal was at risk of unraveling if politicians did not act quickly to reach compromises and implement the deal. Negotiations to implement the accord also collapsed in earlier this month amid a disagreement over the procedure for nominating a new prime minister from the main opposition bloc. The fraction of the opposition coalition that did not sign the deal said that the latest signing will worsen things, especially since the ruling majority showed little signs of compromising. France says its forces in West Africa have killed more than 20 militants in a forest near Mali's border with Burkina Faso. In a statement by its regional force, air and ground forces were involved in the attack, although it did not identify the militant group whose members were killed. A French military spokesman says the militants had been targeted in a forest in the southwest of Gao province. Mali suffers frequent attacks by Islamist militants despite a French military operation since 2013 to drive jihadists from northern cities. The week-long Cameroon International Film Festival has been launched in Boa, a city in the southwest Anglophone region. This festival, which follows the lifting of a three-month internet ban that had worried organizers, brings together filmmakers from across Cameroon and around the world. Cameroon's International Film Festival kicked off this week in Boa, the capital of the southwest region, in the English-speaking part of the country, where a three-month internet shutdown had cast doubts over the event's success. The government restored the internet to the Anglophone region last week after cutting it in January amid protests against the predominantly French-speaking government of President Paul Beer. Camille has a lot of um, dynamism in it, and especially the fact that it's been done in this part of um, Cameroon, the, the English region of Cameroon. So it's very important for us, especially the English filmmakers, to have something like this. So partic particularly, I'm um, very honored to be, to be here today. You know, it's really, it's wonderful. The festival, which brings together filmmakers from across Cameroon and the world, launched on Monday and is expected to promote the local film industry while developing cooperation with other countries. A recurring theme in film screens this year was women. Congolese production, Enemi Dutemps, is a story about a woman caught between past 
present and future as she struggles to deal with the reality and a traumatic experience. Cameroonian film Kiss of Death about forced marriage sparked a lot of emotion and debate. People might not be seeing it now because they live in, a, in a cities, but if you go deep into many villages in Cameroon, you will discover that these practices still exist. You will see girls of 12, 13, even 18 or 20. The fact that you give a girl out without her consent, no matter the age, it's already a problem. The film industry in Cameroon has long existed in the shadows of Nollywood, neighboring Nigeria's multi-million dollar sector, which is ranked second largest in the world after Bollywood by quantity of films produced. But analysts in Cameroon say the industry is now experiencing a revival thanks to digital screening options and cheaper production technology. Festivals like Kabif and another one called Ecran Noir or Black Screen have shown that filmmakers here are eager to create despite difficulty in financing and the fact that there are no cinemas in Cameroon. We created Kamif for the sole purpose of uh, helping uh, the film industry to attract content buyers because in Cameroon uh, we have a very vibrant industry, the youth are very committed, the people is, are very committed and we also believe that the community love films but there are no structures to exploit um, these movies. I mean, no cinemas, all the cinemas have been shut down or within the 10 regions of Cameroon. We have um, uh, filmmakers from India, from Israel, from other countries. So, Kami, and also it's, it's, it's a form of networking. You can come here, you meet a scriptwriter, you meet a, a movie director, you meet an actor whom you can cast for your next movie, and also we showcase our talents and celebrate each other and have fun. You know, there's a lot of partying and that's it. This second edition of Kamif is expected to be bigger than the first. Some of the issues participants hope to find lasting solutions to are piracy, as well as a strategy to grow local and international appreciation for Cameroonian content. That's Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jocka Rogers. Bye for now.